Well, a couple of things were happening. As you know, I had told you that Foxy wanted nothing to do with any drug business. And uh, Cataldo was my supplier. And it was sort of a flat, it was like a drought of heroin in early 74. And so Cataldo, uh, I think he went over to Europe and made a new connection. When he came back, he said in a couple of weeks, they were going to have, you know, a new fresh supply. But uh, we hadn't done any heist and we were broke and um, we needed to pay our attorneys. Foxy had a criminal case pending. I had a couple of criminal cases pending. And I said, look, I know about this black drug dealer in Brooklyn. Let's just go stick up, stick up their, uh, their packaging house. They had a whole bunch of women in there packaging heroin. And, uh, you know, somehow they kept getting the supply. So they were really busy. So we went over there and this drug dealer. It was like 40000 or something. And then Foxy, you know, sort of got remorseful about it. You know, we shouldn't be doing this. And I got to go tell John, tell Gotti that what we did. So I said, all right, well. So he went and he told Gotti, gave him a couple thousand dollars. And Gotti wasn't happy about that. You shouldn't be robbing other criminals. You know, that was sort of like a... A code. Cataldo didn't make a big deal out of it. But a month or so later, Cataldo asked me, uh, what happened to that friend of yours, Nunzio? Nunzio was a character. Nunzio was a couple of years older than me. He was a master sneak thief, which meant that he didn't like to do robberies. He didn't like to face people. He was a master burglar. And not only that, but he had created many identities. Uh, he could get a license right out of the Department of Motor Vehicles in New York State. He would uh, sell stolen cars to military people. He'd wear a military uniform. He was quite an actor. And he'd go on military bases, sell a stolen car to a, uh, you know, like a, a soldier or a guy in the army. And then he'd steal it back. And he was the character. And so he approached me about going on this robbery with him. It was sort of like a burglary. He says, I know where there's a couple of million dollars. I said, how do you know that? He says, well, a friend of mine gets heroin from these two Italian guys. I go, where is this at? He said, I think he said it was over in, uh, uh, I want to say, Bayside, Queens. Nice upscale community. So I said, oh, well, let's take a ride over there and look at the house. So he went over there and looked at the house. He said, these are the guy's names. So he gave me the two names. I went back and told Cataldo. He said, Cataldo said, stay away from that guy. They might, these guys are vicious guys. And, you, you know, you don't want to get involved with that, that crew. It was a different family. I don't remember. It might have been the Genovese family. I'm not sure. So I told Nunzio, well, look, I'm not going to do this, you know. He said, you don't have to go in. I got this guy, Nippy, and he's got a guy named Carlo. They'll go in there. Uh, they'll find that money, and you could just stay outside. No, I'm not doing this. Just not going to do it. So I didn't pay attention to what went on. Maybe a few weeks later, Cataldo called me. said, hey, let's meet for coffee. He said, uh, did you ever go over to that Bayside house? I said, I went over there with that. Nunzio guy, and then I told him I didn't want any part of it. He says, are you sure? I go, yeah. He, I said, why? He's because those two wise guys lost $2 million, and their old grandmother had a heart attack while these two, two or three thieves were in the house. But they got the money, and they got some drugs. I go, hey, Dominic, I'm telling you, I did not have anything to do with that robbery. Another week goes by, and he said, God, he got a hold of Foxy. And Foxy confessed to robbing that black drug dealer. I go, yeah, but but we never got we never got down the road on those two Italian guys that were big time drug smugglers because they were bringing in kilos of heroin, which is 250,000 a kilo. So they had a lot of money there, a lot of drugs. And finally, Cataldo and God and Gotti somehow tracked down this guy, Nunzio. And they didn't grab him right away, but they did grab this guy, Nippy, and they put him in a basement. They started torturing him. Well, you know, Cataldo had me stay in the house for a couple hours, and Foxy was, you know, hanging out with Gotti. I wanted to find out if we were really involved. 
And finally, they tortured this guy, Nippy, so bad that he confessed the whole thing. Well, that guy, Nunzio, he was a character because it was right around that time, maybe, I don't know, a month or so before they started going after these three guys, that he took me to a bank and showed me a safe deposit box with a million dollars in it. Wow. And that was part of the money that they ripped off from these two, you know, wise guys that were dealing Heroin, you know, that it was all secretive back then. It was 1974. So within like maybe a week or so, they tortured that nippy. They tortured the Carlo guy. I guess they chopped them up and got rid of their bodies. And then one day, C Cataldo told me, um, we're going to go after, going to go after Nunzio. I go, really? So the Nunzio guy was, was a flashy guy. He had a beautiful girlfriend two or three apartments. He was living the, the high life, man. And uh, drove a fancy sports car. Somehow they grabbed a hold of him and they tortured him. And he confessed and he offered to give them the million dollars out of their safe deposit box. But those guys, the wise guys, they didn't want the million dollars. They killed him. And when they killed him, Cataldo came back and told me and I knew where he had the girlfriend. So Foxy and I went to the girlfriend and we concocted a story that, you know, the wise guys were holding Nunzio because he lost a lot of money gambling. And, uh, you know, he <clears throat> he uh, told us that you could get 50000 out of one of his safe deposit boxes. The guy had like three or four different identities, three or four different safety box, safety uh, deposit boxes. And... Uh, I sat with the girl and she's like, I can't do it. It's too late. I can do it tomorrow morning. And they'll re release him. I go, yeah, they'll release him. But he was already dead. So mm -hmm. I waited till the next morning and I went to the bank with her and she got the money out. And then Foxy and I kept the money and then I never talked to her again. I guess eventually she figured out he disappeared and he was dead. But, you know, they killed all three of those guys and they were happy about doing it. And then Foxy says, look, you got to get out of this drug business. It's not, it's too vicious. It's, you know, treacherous business. So I said, by that time, it was like, you know, I think we were getting ready to do the watch score. And he said, we got good scores coming up. Get away from that drug dis business. But Cataldo didn't want to release me out of the drug, the drug business because I made a lot of money for him. Anyway, that was the story of Nunzio. And he was the character I never found out how they killed him, but he did confess. And the way Cataldo told me, he cried like a baby and peed all over himself and they tortured him and killed him. Hey, thanks for watching this clip. This clip came from one of my interviews I did in the past. Please hit subscribe if you want to get more clips like this. Also, if you want to watch the full interview, I'll put a link in the description. Or you can hit the button on the screen to watch the full interview.